Would any of you like to make any kind of a closing couple of remarks? You don't have to if you don't want to. Uh, I think I've said enough. <laughs> <laughs> the 360 is here to stay. Welcome to it and enjoy. <laughs> uh, you know, it's actually interesting. There's a, there's a couple of things. Uh, first of all, it may be here to stay. I, I, I'm not convinced it's here to make any money for the record companies. I think they may be kidding themselves, but we'll see if that comes true. And the only thing that I, I don't really know why I'm focused on this, but this concept that there's more music being consumed now than ever, I don't really totally believe. And I think that somebody might want to do an empirical study of that. I think everybody says things, they become like truisms because everybody said it enough times. But I get a sense that people aren't really consuming music in any greater quantities and probably could be less. There's video games, there's distractions, it's background, it's on the computer. Just because you have 10,000 files doesn't mean you listen to 10,000 files. Ah. I'm not convinced that music is important, as is important, or as a consumer, or as being consumed in the in in the way that it was, and with the passion that it was, uh, you know, 10, 15, 20 years ago. I just, I just throw that out there. Yeah, and to Peter's point, whether record companies will end up making money on these deals, it's it's hard to say because we haven't been making these deals for all that long. Even though my company has been making them as as far back as 2003, I believe, and I think we were sort of ahead of the head of the curve. Well, no, no I mean, I don't want to live. We we that we had an act that was off the Disney Channel. It was called the Party, and it was the first thing that I signed when I was at Hollywood Records, and and it was this deal. But I kind of view the Party and and the you know not the Jonas Brothers, but like. Uh, uh, Hannah Montana's, again, I don't know her deal, but, but sort of is different because they're more like employment deals. It's more like the Pussycat Dolls deal where, where really they're not 360 deals. They're just basically you work for us kind of deals. And, and those you can make money at because you control all the income streams. Well, yeah, and that's not, that's not the Jonas Brothers deal. Yeah, no, I know, I know, I know it's not the Jonas but, Brothers deal because they were... Yeah, I mean, the deal that we talked about is not the kind of deal that we make. That's, we make about that, that deal maybe about 50 to 60 percent of the time, the other 40 percent of the time or 50 percent of the time we're making deals where we actually do control the rights. But, you know, if we are producing the concerts, there's real money to be made and right. we have made money doing that. Yes. And we've made a lot of money for the artists as well. I mean, because we can do it at a higher level than they can do it on their own. I mean, if, if you know, if an artist is playing clubs, we're probably not going to be able to sell out arenas at the, from the get-go. But if there is a tie-in that we can actually use some of our other Disney assets to, to leverage uh, to a higher level, you know, we can actually play bigger venues, get better deals with the promoters, get better deals with the venues, and make money for everybody. But, uh, I mean, the type of deal that, that we just talked about, I mean, we've been making them for a while, and Peter apparently was a visionary. He made them quite a while ago before, you know, before I even became aware of what Hollywood was doing. But, uh, you know, until the artist actually becomes really successful, having a percentage of touring and merchandising just doesn't mean a, a whole lot in terms of bottom line dollars. Um, we're seeing, we're certainly seeing 360 deals, you know, everywhere all the time. I, I, I agree totally about, I think there's, there's two types of deal. There's a, the deal that we've been talking through today is very much a, a new artist signing kind of deal as opposed to some of the other things which are, which are more mm -hmm. properties and you know, right. rightly employment deals, and I think th those are fine. Um, I think at the end of the day, it's, you know, what we as managers are looking for right now is we have to really be concerned with, you know, do we have the right partner in terms of being able to generate additional media impressions beyond the sort of the, the you know, the, the purely trad traditional avenues and, and, and what kind of part of the record label and the publishers can be in terms of sync and in terms of placing, in, in terms of placing artists, in terms of placing, placing the artist's music and different things. I mean, you know, kudos to, to, to Disney and Hollywood. I mean, that's, they are definitely an example of a label that, that is, that's very, very successful at that. Um, you know, and I think, and, and generally all, the one thing I, I will say is, is that, is that, you know, when the 360 concept first came up, a lot of us were on the management side. We were really opposed to it because the the what we looked at was was labels getting involved and labels trying to come in and just doing land grabs on on rights and getting involved in things that they really had no business being yeah, involved. And in. added no value. And they added zero value. Um, I think we are seeing though we 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 are seeing a change in in that because I think that one of the things that that is happening is that. We're seeing labels being more proactive in terms of how they're placing name and likeness and how they're, and how they're being able to integrate artists and their music 
across different platforms and with different uh, and with different brands and different marketing partners. And to that extent, they are adding they are adding value. And I certainly don't have a have an issue with their with their participation in, in any of the other revenue streams. It really does, at the end of the day, for me, become far more of an issue of. Is exactly. the is the is the is their interest in the revenue stream? Yeah, is the does the return match the investment, and, right. and is it all fair? And if it's if it's fair, if they're going, you know, if a label's going considerably at risk, right? Then you know they should be entitled to receive considerable reward. I, they, you know, I mean that's yeah, business and normal. One thing uh, again, I, I know that when I did the party deal, the managers. Let's talk about the managers. I, I hired the manager. I paid the managers. Is that yeah? yeah but the manager wasn't you know. Uh, um, is that how you, how do you incorporate managers in these employment really, type deals? Yeah, we haven't really. You don't have any right. managers? No, I mean, they're managers who come with each act that we have. I mean, we oh. haven't signed an act without a manager, and we haven't been in a position to employ the manager right. and assign that manager to an act. Because the income is just cut so drastically that, you know, it might be hard to find a good manager. Yeah, I mean, there's been talk about that in Nashville um, right. when we've done some Nashville deals about, you know, kind of bringing in kind of a manager who can kind of take it to a certain point and then bring in the Simons and people like that. Jim, All right, we have uh, unfortunately uh, hit the House of Blues curfew and need right. us out of here. Right. So join me in thanking Load the out. panel. Load out. Load out. <laughs> Who's up on stage? Take the mics down.